Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the HyperX Quadcast S. This is a new-ish microphone from HyperX, and an update to the original HyperX Quadcast that I reviewed previously. And this features basically some RGB lighting and some slight design changes, but it's otherwise the same microphone, and that's no bad thing, because the original Quadcast was a fantastic piece of kit. Now this is a microphone that's designed to work with PC, PS4, and Mac. It uses a USB-C to USB-A connection, and therefore can plug in to those devices with ease and offers a great capture quality. Now for reference, I'm using this microphone to do the voiceover for the video that you're seeing here and I've done no changes to the sound in that it's a pretty high volume capture volume so you might pick up some background noise and I'm not going to do any noise cancellation so you get an idea of what that's like. Now for reference, it's on a boom arm and I'm going to show you how to install it on a boom arm and why you should later on. And I'm also going to do a comparison with the sound of it on the desk on its stand because this microphone, as you'll see, comes with its own pretty decent stand. It also has highlights that include a built-in pop filter and that stand also has a shock mount built into it. Now this design, as I said on the original, HyperX Quadcast is a fantastic design that's really unusual. Most microphones, you get them, they come on a pretty standard stand, and that's it. Then you have to get a pop filter and a shock mount and a boom arm all as a separate thing, or maybe just a pop filter. It's really going to depend on your environment and what you're doing and working out noise cancellation and getting the microphone into a good place so it's not capturing loads of background audio and ruining your voiceovers or whatever else. Now this comes with a 3 meter USB-C cable that you can see here and it's a braided cable and it also has a ferrite ring on it that's designed to stop electromagnetic interference and such to make sure that the microphone captures good quality without any interference from your PC or other electronic equipment nearby. It's a nifty little thing handy to have on the cable but that's why that's there, that chunky little beast. Now the microphone itself as you'll see as we go through is slightly different from the original quadcast in its design aesthetic, but it delivers a similar capture quality and it basically has exactly the same specifications. It's capable of capturing up to 48 kilohertz 16-bit sample rate audio. It has three 14 millimeter condensers inside it for capturing the audio with an electric condenser microphone set up and it has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So it does a decent job of capturing some pretty good quality audio. More on that a bit later on. Included in the box is also this little mount that I'll show you how to use in a second, which allows you to mount it on a boom arm and that has two different threads on it. All this is going to be in the description so you can get all the specifications that you need as well as links to find out more. Now here you can see the shock mount in action. Basically this microphone is set up on a stand, but that stand is tied to it with essentially strong rubber cables that allow you to move the microphone around without interfering with it. That means that any knocks and bumps on your desks won't ruin the audio and it cuts down on as much noise as possible. It also results in a really nice looking microphone. As I said, it also has pop filters built into it so it's designed to take out some of the pops from your voice too. And there are other nice features to it that I really liked on the original Quadcast that are still here. For example, you'll notice that bottom volume wheel that allows you to control the gain on the fly. So if you find you're a bit too quiet, you can turn yourself up with ease. And there's also a tap to mute functionality on the top that I'll show you a bit later on. Out of the box, this does capture some background audio. You might be able to hear the fans from my PC at the moment, for example, but it does have four different polar patterns, stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and bidirectional, and you can switch those on a switch on the rear that I'll show in a minute. And as I said, you can adjust the gain on the fly easily with this little wheel on the bottom that's quiet and doesn't make any noise really when you're turning it. So it's really easy to do that. I found, for example, the other day when I was streaming, I had it set too low. Usually a good way to stop background noise is to set the gain low, keep it quiet, and then get your mouth as close as possible to it. But it was too quiet for people, they couldn't hear me. And just a little twizzle of that dial allows you to turn it up. Now I'm gonna include a clip of that stream later on in this video so you can hear the noise that's picked up from the mic in terms of keyboard noise and other background noise so you can see what that does in terms of that. And I'm also going to include a clip a bit later on where I'm recording 
capture quality with the mic on my desk so you can hear that too so stick around for that on the rear you have the USB-C connection and a headphone jack so you can plug in a 3.5 mil headset and then you can monitor the microphone so you can hear your own voice and get an idea of what you're capturing now obviously this being RGB friendly is basically aimed at streamers and people that want to have the mic visible on the camera. It has this RGB lighting in it that I'll show you a bit more depth later on that you can customize and adjust. And it, it's a visually aesthetic, interesting device that obviously has that RGB lighting and it makes it stand out a bit more. The previous microphone just had a red light on the inside and then when you tap the top of it, it would go dark to let you know it was muted. This sort of has a similar logic where it's lit up with the RGB lights and then you can turn it off in the same way. Now on the rear, as I said, you have the polar pattern switch, which allows you to switch between the various ones. This mic's designed to be able to do lots of different things. So whether you want to use it for recording music and doing vocals, or if you're doing a podcast, you have different settings that allow you to, for example, have people sit on either side of the microphone so that you could do interviews and podcasts in that way. But for me, and for maybe most people, you're going to use it in the cardioid mode, which you can see here, which is basically where you're talking into the front of it and it's capturing your voice from that. Get it nice and close to you and you can capture some really good quality audio. The audio of it is very good as you can hear. The voiceover now, you can probably compare it with my usual voiceovers and get an idea of what the quality is like. And I think it's pretty good. It's very nice. It does capture some key sounds as you'll hear later on, but it's unsurprising. And you can get rid of those things within OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS by applying filters and noise gates. And obviously it's going to vary depending on the setup of your room and how much noise cancelling goodness you have. Now here you can see the tap to mute functionality that I was talking about. There's no click or audible noise from that. So you can just tap on top and then you get a visual cue that it's muted because the lights go off. So you know it's muted and you're not, people aren't going to be able to hear you. And the fact that it obviously doesn't make a sound when you press it means you haven't got a click or any sort of bang on the microphone when you need to mute it so it doesn't ruin your streaming or your recordings, which is really nice. Now this RGB lighting, as you will see, it's quite nice looking and you can see the inner pop filter and the design of that and you see the light shining through it. But one thing I did note that is worth commenting on is that the light essentially seems to be emanating from the top and the bottom. Now, if you're sitting at a certain angle or if you have the microphone positioned in a certain way and you probably catch glimpses of it as I go through, you can see that light through the mic and it presents these sort of hot spots where it's obvious where the bulbs are and where the light's shining from. And I think that's a shame. It doesn't seem to offer a nice diffuse light to it, which is a bit of a downer. Now, with the stand, it's easy to remove, take that off, and then use the attachment so that you can put it on a boom arm. I'm going to show you how to mount it, and for reference, I'm using Blue's Compass Boom Arm. I'll link to that in the description, which is a solid favorite of mine. And essentially, the thread that comes with this is designed to work with any standard boom arm. So any boom arm you can get your hands on, you'll be able to fit it on there. All you need to do is unscrew it from the stand that it's plugged into originally. You'll find washers on either side and a clip on one side and a screw on the other. You just unscrew that and then pop it off. Obviously, be sure to not lose those washers. Then you see this adapter. Now, this has two thread sizes within it. If you look inside, that means that it could fit on any thread on any boom arm, as I said. And there are some quirks to it that I'll show you. It took me a minute to get it fitting just right because obviously you need to have it in a position where you can easily talk to it and access the controls and get it close to you if you're putting it on a boom arm. I would highly recommend any microphone getting it on a boom arm. This is especially important with this one, although the background audio that picks up isn't as bad as the Wave 3 from what I've seen. I did a comparison between the Wave 3 and the original Quadcast. If you're interested, be sure to check that out. And I have a playlist on all the different microphones I've tested out. And this is still one of my favorites. With the RGB lighting, it's an extra appealing, but it is also expensive at the moment and quite hard to get hold of. Hopefully that will change in the future. Now you can see the basic process for installing the mic on a boom arm is really simple. It basically just screws in. And then because you have that screw on the attachment you can then adjust the position of it however what you will note is that it's jammed in this direction and essentially if i then tilt it upwards it's then going to be facing 
away from me. Where I've got the boom arm positioned is a bit awkward for this. You can obviously reposition your boom arm or you can make use of other techniques. Now a close up shot of it and you can see once again, you'll note that basically I'm trying to screw thread into the thinner bit. So recessed within this attachment is a thin area where you can put in this style of thread. And you'll see if I tighten it up too much on the compass, it basically gets into a position where it's not terribly useful for the capture of ink. So for reference, my boom arm is off to the right hand side of my desk and then I usually put it close to my face so I can talk into it. But at this angle, the mic would be sort of facing the wrong direction. Now there's a, a thread adapter contained within the blue compass setup, which basically allows you to plug that into relevant microphones and basically change the setup of it. What I'm trying to achieve here is to get it into a better position on the boom arm so that I can talk into it as I am now and get a much better capture quality. And there is also another attachment, which is essentially a disc that allows you to change how far on you screwed your microphone and you can then adjust that. So just to shorten the process down, once again, I'm basically screwing it in in the same place, but once I've got it into a position that I want, I can then screw that ring down and then that holds the mic steadily in place, but I can then adjust the position of it and I can move it around to be in the right area. Now I can talk directly into it while I'm looking into the camera that you can see mounted behind it and while looking at the screen of C reading chat or just gaming away happily. Now you get a taste of some more of the RGB lighting when it's sitting up on that and that's going to be shown off to the camera and I think it's worth talking about another thing, another interesting quirk of this. There are settings that you can do for the RGB lighting that I'll show you a bit later on in the HyperX Ingenuity software. One thing that I did note is that there are obviously greens as an option with an RGB mic and the colors that it has set, you'll see they're just going between the different colors. One thing that I noticed is that I have a chroma filter with a green screen on my stream normally, so you just see me and the mic and that's it. In this case, when it cycled to green, it went invisible so you could see through the mic and behind me, which was quite interesting. Uh, so it's worth bearing that in mind. If you plan on using this on a stream and you have a chroma filter, you probably want to make sure it's not set to green at all. A nice little quirk, not necessarily of the device, but of my setup, I thought it was interesting and worth knowing. Now, this microphone, once it's plugged in, you can use the Ingenuity software, which is in beta at the moment, I believe. But it's basically a really simple software that allows you to adjust the volumes of the microphone and also the light. So I want to show you the RGB lighting. It's essentially set up into two zones. And as you can see, it cycles through the colors as a standard one. But there are other options you can choose. Those options include solid, blink, cycle, lightning and wave and essentially you have two different zones that you can apply that to top and bottom now the best way to do this is to apply them in layers so basically you can see i've added two solid effects for different colors here what i'm going to try and do is basically set the bottom to one color and the top to a different one and and that means that you can obviously adjust that light the way you want it and set it up in different ways, which is pretty nifty. So you don't have to have it as one solid color for the whole thing, or even lighting up the whole thing. You could just have one bit lit up. And there are a number of different colors to choose from, or you can have it cycling through the different RGB effects. They're not mind blowing, these RGB effects, I don't think particularly, but they are customizable. You'll note, for example, even when it's set on the cycling ones, you can choose which colors it cycles through. And I do like this ability to blend two different colors. That looks kind of nifty as well. So it's nice in that way. You do need to think about what it's going to look like to the camera. So it's worth testing these out if you are going to have it on the camera and it's not just there for your own thrills and enjoyment. But you can see just how easy it is to cycle through the different colors and schemes within the soft now. Now, if you just quickly look at the audio settings, now if you just quickly look at the audio settings, you'll see that you can see the different polar patterns on here, but you can't actually adjust them. It tells you that you have to do that from the hardware level, as in the switch on the back of the microphone. You will note that you can also change the mic volume from here, but you do need to make sure the mic's actually selected as the correct one within Windows Sound Settings. I hadn't done that in the software at the time. But you can then adjust the volume on the microphone. I said already that you can adjust the gain by using it on the bottom. You note that doesn't change the mic volume with 
within the software, but it does it at a hardware level, so you can still adjust that and make sure the sound is right and you have good levels. When you dive into Windows Sound Settings, additional device properties, you'll notice that under the advanced setting in that microphone sounds tab, you can also change the sample rate, so the capture quality, and you can adjust it all the way up to 48 kilohertz and you get the best quality from that. I think it defaults to 44, which isn't quite as good. So it's well worth taking a quick look and making sure that that's set to the highest possible sound capture. So what you've seen so far is a really interesting microphone. And now I'm going to show you a quick clip from a recent stream where you can hear me capturing audio and you'll hear the mic and the keyboard sounds in the background. Oh, what? What? Ah. What? How you get all the kills? I fucking ah ah! Where did you get shot from? I was oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh, look out! Wow, bush left to ah. left. Already. Ran right into a drilling. Oh, no. thank All I can do is watch helplessly. Save me, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> He's just so hushy. <laughs> This audio is captured with the microphone on the desk right next to my keyboard, as you can see, because what I wanted to do was to show how much background audio it picks up when you're actually using the keyboard. I've got the mic set to the same levels, but I am now recording on my desk instead of on a boom arm. And for reference, I'm now using Corsair's K60 with low profile Cherry MX speed switches. And you can see how much sound that picks up in the background as I'm talking, because obviously you're going to be talking while typing, or let's just pretend that we're WASDing around in the game as I was in that stream. And you can see, like, even if you're quiet, even if you're trying to be quiet, it's still probably picking up a fair amount of background noise. Maybe it's quite close to my keyboard, but if you have a small setup, don't have much space, then you're going to have this sort of issue, whether you put it on the right-hand side next to your mouse or in front of the keyboard or to the side of the keyboard is going to be an issue. So getting it up on a boom arm is certainly the best option, but it still does capture some very good quality audio in this position. So there you have it, a very nice looking microphone with a number of really nice features to it, some great sound capabilities that obviously the bonus of the built-in pop filter and shock mount and the other setup making this a very nice all-round microphone. I'd like to give a quick shout out at the end of this video, a special thanks to my two YouTube members, Meaty Keyboard and Raw, who pay a little subscription each month for early access and other benefits while watching my videos and appreciate them. And if you'd like to find out more, click that join button. Otherwise, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Crawl. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you and have a great life.